Hi, Steve here, and welcome to this first tutorial, which is a get started quick tutorial. It's just so that um, once you've got your bot, got your key from Michael, and uh, have it on your desktop, ready to go, this is so you can hit the ground running. In the next tutorial, we'll take a little bit more in depth. Okay, so first of all, once you've uh, unlocked the software, you'll have this little icon on your desktop, and uh, once you click on that, in my case, I get this little box telling me, do I want to run the software? Your computer may be a little bit different. Then what happens is we get a little check from the license and then we can log in to our Betfair account. You must be logged into your Betfair account for the bot to work as the bot places bets on your Betfair account. So we Going to log in. These here, only if you live in Romania or Italy do you need to use these, otherwise you just go straight to the login, click the login, and now what the bot is doing now is talking to Betfair, and now the bot tells us, and this has to be in there by Betfair's um, rules with their bots, it's just letting you know that we are running a staking plan. Please remember that this option may harm your bank, and there's six of these because there's six backing tabs, so each backing tab I've got checked in recovery mode at the moment. So once we've checked them, depending on your computer and what you've got running that, it may take a minute or two to actually load up because what it's doing when it's loading up, it's getting all the information as you can see there uh, from Betfair. But basically what happens is when you get it out of the box, this is what's happened. The auto reload's ticked and it should be ticked. The commission, there's no commission there. so. What I suggest you do if you're going to be using the bot in Australia, um, then use 8% 8 commission because there's a couple of states that run about 7.5, so 8% is going to cover that. And if you're running it from Australia to the UK, Ireland, etc., still leave it at 8 because all that's doing is the bot is allowing a little bit more information. So when you get the bot, you'll see that uh, the three countries are ticked. So if you don't want to bet in those countries, uh, obviously untick them. For this exercise, I'll just leave them ticked. Comes up by default in the win market. You can bet win or place. Selection, you can have any or you can have one to eight in the favorite market. Um, what I've been running is on any. And then we go to the trainer. So if you're gonna run a jockey, say follow a jockey, you can scroll down to any trainer. So it doesn't matter what trainer the jockey's riding for. And in the jockey, you may say, you can use the first letter of their name if you want to get it up quicker. So you put the drop the drop down menu that's got all the jockeys today. Just for example, so we're looking at Adam Kirby. We've got him there. And now these are the prices that are already set in and are up to you to change if you want to. The minimum price is the minimum price of your select of what you're doing here. Now the minimum price of the first favourite is something completely different and you can see here I've got from 1 to 7. Basically it means any favourite as long as it's under 7s the bot will continue to look at that race and see if Adam Kirby's got a ride and it's his ride between 2 and 40 in the, in the prices. Okay so if that's true if you don't want to bet in races that have got odds on, you can put two there. So if there's an odds on favourite in that race, the bot will not even look at it and consider betting on it. But I like to have it as one because I, the odds on often get rolled. Um, time to bet, pre-play or in play, always leave it on pre-play. 15 seconds before the off is, a, a, is enough time because what you're looking at is if you're betting small amounts, betting under the bet fair minimum sort of thing, then the bet the bot's got to do a couple of bets. It's not a straightforward bet. So allow a little bit of time because if the market's changing a bit, you need a bit of time for the bet to get action. Minimum price I've got on there is a thousand. Mainly if you're betting on some of the small meetings in Australia, well you need to be at a thousand to obviously get the bets on. If you're only going to bet uh, in the UK and that, well, you can just sit there at 50,000 or 100,000, whatever you want. But this is how it's preset. Uh, the minimum runners is one and maximum is 25. I just leave it there. Now, the stop, stop at a profit per race. I'll explain all this in another video, but stop at a profit per race. I've just got, we're looking for a 10p target or a 10 cent target. That's all we want. And if we get that, because it's ticked, it will just start 
the cycle again. Um, we've got this tick here, which means that these two figures become irrelevant if it's tick. But what it means is stop at a profit each tab. If the tab gets to the profit of five, in this case, we've got five there, it would reset. But because we've got it ticked, if we didn't have it ticked, sorry, it would stop. It wouldn't bet any more for that tab. Okay, so that's what that means. And stop at a profit all tabs. That means if all the tabs that you had running equal five dollars or five pounds, then the bet would stop unless you've got it ticked. Level staking. If you want to go level staking, you click that, then you'll see that this gets grayed out. So the profit target gets grayed out, but we still have these stop at a profit each tab or all tabs are still relevant. Okay, so you can put in here if you wanted to bet a pound or two pounds per selection, you would put put it in here. But for this case, we're using the uh, loss recovery staking. So the next thing here is the loss of staking of each tab. Well, I've got 10 in there. So that will allow me to go to 10 pound, 10 dollars before the bot will reset back to the target of just 10p again. And because I've got a tick here, that means it will continue and restart. If I have continue, this one tick, the middle one, and don't tick it please, that means what happens is the bot will just keep going and going and going until such time as it gets a winner. And you don't really want to do that. If all things went against you, you could end up losing your bank. So you don't want to do that. And don't continue, it means if you got to 10 on a tab and still hadn't got a winner, winner and had don't continue, then the bot would just stop until you restarted again. Distribute losses among the enabled tabs. Um, for this exercise, when you start, just leave it unticked because basically what it is, is all the bets are going to go into one tab up the top here. We've got 10 of these enabled, but because we don't have Mexican wave ticked, all the bets will keep on going onto tab one. Um, and I'll explain how that works in another video. So leave distributed losses unticked. Allow handicap and non handicap. Obviously, if you have both of them unticked, there would be no races, and you'd see on the left hand side the races would start to get grayed out. So have those ticked. Harness racing, unless you're going to be betting harness racing in Australia and New Zealand, leave them unticked. And Mexican Wave, as I said, leave that unticked. Profit Delta, I always have that set at 10% of my target. So my target here is 10p. My Profit Delta is 1p. It means when I have a losing bet, um, the, the bot will add 1p to my target. So my original target here is I'm trying to win 10p on the first bet. If that bet loses, how much we stake will be tried to be recovered and also it will add another p. Uh, 1p. So basically, in this case here, we've got 10p trying to be targeted. We might have spent 2p trying to get that target, so we're up to 12p if it lost, and that's another 1p there. So the next target the bot would be looking at is 13p profit, and so it would stake according to that, and so on. And once a win is struck, then it goes back to 10p. So once you've set one tab up, you can see there the six tabs up there. Once you've set one tab up, you just click start, move to the next tab and all the settings are already in there if you want to use this uh, low settings to start with and then you would just go to if you wanted any trainer or for example you might want a trainer you might want Aidan O'Brien with any jockey so you do that and because these settings are all preset you can just click start and now what tab back 2 will do it will back any jockey any any horse that Aidan O'Brien is training regardless on who's the jockey you could later on experiment and say, look, I only want Aidan O'Brien's horse if they're the first favourite. So if you did that, then it would look only if the horse is first favourite and Aidan O'Brien is the trainer, will it bet on it? Okay, but for, for initially when you're starting, just use any and click start. And you just go through the six tabs like that. Okay, there's no compulsion to use six tabs if you only wanted to follow a couple of jockeys. That's fine. And when you finish for the day, if you're not running it 24-7, always click stop and go through and cl click stop on all six tabs or all tabs that are open 
before you close it down, okay? That way it will retain the data, uh, etc. There's no data in this because this is a brand new bot, but the data would look something like this. This one here, so this is the results tab. You can see here the bets that it had, and they're all being bet on tab one here at the moment. We go up to tab one, we can see there it's already it's just got a race there it's green now because it means it's active it's uh, getting ready to have races ready for a race this one here fast as the wind is what we're betting on in the next race and um, then you have your cancel bets your current bets and there it is that's the one that's coming up now so that is how you can hit the ground running to start with in the next tutorial i'll go in more depth on how you can uh, delete races that you don't want to be involved in and also uh, a bit more in depth on how you can set your uh, selections to do a bit more than what I've just shown you here. So thanks for watching this quick start uh, tutorial and I hope you enjoy the software. On behalf of Michael and myself, C, thanks for watching. Just one thing, so if you want to look at the videos and the owner's manual it's here in the, where the screen button is at the top, software manual. You can get more videos and more information. Thank you.